Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today we're going to show you how to properly disassemble, clean, lubricate, and reassemble this Browning BPS-10 and Vector shotgun. Really, the process is not that difficult. It's a little bit different than other shotguns that are out there, but really I think you're going to find it to be pretty easy. And we will show you the supplies you're going to need to get this all cleaned up and get it back out into the field. Uh, a little shout out to my dad's buddy Jerry who loaned us this shotgun. We're going to do some testing with it and play around with it a little bit and show you just how awesome this shotgun is. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get okay, started. First things first, uh, safety first. Let's go ahead and push the safety to the rear which is located on the top of the receiver. Go ahead and flip the shotgun over. This is a bottom ejection model. So you're not going to be able to check the chamber from the sides to see if it's empty. Uh, go ahead and press your release button right here that's going to allow you to cycle the action so go ahead and pull it all the way to the rear okay then go ahead and visually inspect the chamber the magazine will make sure that there's no shells in the in the firearm there's nothing down here in the chamber we can physically feel it and we are ready to go on to our next step okay i'm gonna try to be quick about this but honestly there's a lot here that you don't need but these are things that i have that make my life so much easier when i do these cleaning videos because i do quite a few of them first of all like a hoppies kit that you see right here it's going to come with some bore cleaner that you can use. It's going to come with oil, patches. Um, it's not going to come with the barrel brush or the barrel swab. I bought those separate. You find those in the accessory section at your sporting goods store. I got 12 gauge uh, barrel mop and also bore brush. Again, makes it easier to clean out the bore. Uh, you have the jags that you need, the rods that you need. Now this cleaning kit should be long enough to get through the 28 inch barrel. You shouldn't have any trouble with it. And this cleaning kit runs about $10. And really you can function with just this. There's a few things that I like to use though to make it a little bit easier. You know, when it comes to cleaner, you can use whatever you want. I recommend uh, Safari Land Break Free CLP. You can use Ballastol, you can use Rem Oil. Everybody kind of has their preference. I'm a huge fan of cleanse oil. More or less, it's like a two step process. You scrub it on or wipe it on and then wipe it off and then you're all set to go. And it leaves a nice protective coating that's not too thick. So this stuff works great. Now, Cleanse Oil did send me these products. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't get any money from them, but they saw me using their products in some earlier videos and they sent me a whole assortment of their products. So I'm gonna use them. Now, we've also got some pre-soaked patches we can use to clean out the bore. If you don't wanna do that, you can also use the, like I said before, the Hoppies Bore Cleaner with patches, but we'll get to that step when we get there. I like these huge uh, field and range saturated wipes. If you've got a large area of gun to wipe off and you don't want to use a bunch of little patches to do so, one of these will pretty much take care of just about any conventional firearm. Uh, it covers a lot of area and those are really nice to run down a huge barrel like what we have on the shotgun when we're done cleaning it. Uh, basic cotton patches are definitely handy to have. They just cost a couple bucks. These are just a 30 to 45 caliber patch. They're good for general use. I do have some shotgun barrel patches. These are kind of light cottony. They're really nice because they absorb a lot of crud and they do kind of polish out the inside of the barrel, which is nice. The Hoppies kit does come with some of those, so that's really cool. Uh, you are gonna need some sort of a punch set. If you don't have a punch set, you might wanna get one. Um, otherwise, uh, I highly recommend a roll pin punch set. They're kind of nice because they have a dimple on them and that makes pushing the pins out easy. There's a couple pins we have to uh, tap out of the shotgun to get the trigger pack out of the receiver. And then also some Tipton power swabs. These are kind of handy too. They're kind of nice. And you know, also understand everybody kind of has their own method for how they clean their guns and some people don't clean their guns and that's totally fine. But uh, this is what I like to do. Also, if you don't have a builder's block, an easy way to get out those pins from your shotgun is just a roll of thick roll of tape like this or roll of duct tape. And this is what you're going to want to set the gun on so that you can tap out your pins. It's cushioned, it's soft, it's not going to mar up the uh, finish of the gun at all. Makes things a lot easier. Also, I recommend some sort of a mat uh, for a cleaning surface. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, a couple extra items you're going to need. Don't worry about the needle on those pliers. A pair of tweezers, I'll explain why later. And a, some sort of a hammer, like a ball peen hammer. Or if you've got yourself a hammer used for gunsmithing, you want to use that. As we're going to have to drive out a few pins. And uh, real quick before I forget, uh, you know, if you want to take out the uh, choke tube in the end of the barrel down there, you might want to get uh, get yourself a choke key for it if it didn't come with one. So this is the choke key that comes with it. Use this to unscrew the tube in the end of the barrel. Uh, and this came with a shotgun from Browning. Otherwise, a Carlson's kind of fits all gauges choke key works well in a pinch. You can use that too. Uh, the roll pin punches you're going to want, I've got a 532nds and a 316ths. We're going to use those when we take these pins out. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and resume the cleaning. Okay, make sure you've got your forend pushed all the way back. Uh, make sure that you do have the gun cocked and that you do have the safety on. And we will go ahead and remove the end cap here from the magazine tube and we will pull off the barrel. Okay, after that, we'll go ahead and pull the barrel out. Okay, I did have to uh, wiggle the barrel a little bit to the sides to get it to move forward, but you can see we got some grease on there and so on. So we'll go ahead and just pull that out slowly. 
Okay, and uh, I think we'll go ahead and clean the barrel up first. All right, now this gun's pretty uh, dirty, so I'm going to use a soaked patch that comes out of my can of hoppies here. If you just want to put a couple drops of oil on a patch, you can do the same thing. That's up to you, but I'm just going to wipe it all off, and then I'm going to wipe it off with a dry patch. So all right, so like I said before, just go ahead and wipe off the uh, barrel with a clean patch. We're going to go ahead and do that real quick here. Now, when we're all done, we'll put just a few drops of oil on a patch and then just finish up by protecting the, uh, the barrel with that much oil. You don't need a lot of extra lubrication on here. It has a beautiful uh, blued finish on it. That's coming out really nice. It is bringing off a little bit of oxidation and stuff. It's not super dirty, not as bad as it looked initially, but uh, it definitely was uh, overdue for some maintenance. All right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and clean out the barrel. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to go from the rear to the front of the barrel, from the breech to the muzzle. And we just dunked a couple cotton patches in some of the uh, Hoppies Number no. 9 gun bore cleaner. And we're just going to run this patch through a couple times. We're going to let that sit for about 10 minutes or so. And then we're going to move on scrubbing out the, scrubbing out the barrel. All right, so just go ahead and push that through. I like to kind of twist it around a little bit as I'm moving it through the barrel. It gives it a nice little scrub. All right, again, going from the back of the barrel to the front, um, I've got my 10 gauge uh, bore brush. We're gonna go ahead and run this through a couple times. Now, when you push it through, you wanna unscrew it and then go from the back to the front again. Don't pull it forward and then pull it back. It's a good way to just kind of mess up the barrel a little bit. Um, again, I, I prefer going from the back to the front. So here we go. I'm gonna run this through probably about three or four times. All right, so at this point, you got a couple options with what you can do next. You can use some of your barrel patches, uh, put a couple drops of oil on them. Again, run through the barrel a few times, just get the barrel coated, and then run a dry patch through it until it comes clean. You can repeat that process a couple times if you want to. I'm just gonna use one of these saturated um, cleanse oil cloths. Again, I'm gonna run this through probably two or three times. And then after that, I'm going to run the um, barrel mop down the barrel to pick up any leftover debris. And then we'll check the barrel and see if it's nice and shiny. All right, here we go. Okay, so this just shows you how dirty that barrel was. I mean, a lot of you have probably seen dirtier barrels, but this is just going down it a few times. You know, that's after scrubbing it with the bore brush and stuff. So you can see there was a lot that was in there. All right, we're going to go ahead and finish it up with the barrel mop, and then we will move on. So again, just run this through once or twice, and you're all set to move on. All right, so you can just see how much that uh, barrel shines. It's kind of hard to get this in focus. But uh, yeah, it came out looking really nice. There's a little bit of lint that's in there from the patch, but that's it. Didn't get a chance to show it before and after, but the barrel was fairly matte inside and then it was coated with a lot of powder and residue. So uh, let's move on to that action. All right, so using a uh, ball peen hammer, if you just have a regular hammer, that's fine, but be gentle. And our roll pin punch, we're gonna go ahead and tap out this bottom pin. Uh, this is going to allow us to easily remove the trigger pack. All right, here we go. Okay, the pin's gonna fall out. Okay, pull your pin punch back. You're gonna to wanna to kinda of pull kind of forward and down at the same time and your trigger pack will just come right out. There we go. Okay, let's go on. All right, so let's go ahead and get the uh, trigger group all cleaned up. We just wanna put a couple drops of oil. Again, your favorite CLP or some of that Hoppies oil on a patch. We're just gonna go ahead and just gently wipe everything off. There was actually some grass that fell out <laughs> when I pulled out the trigger pack. So I wanna wipe everything off good. You can do this step a couple times if you want to. We're not going to be disassembling this trigger group because there's a lot of springs and a lot of little levers down in here. But uh, just give it all a good little wipe off and you can see how dirty this is. So we're going to repeat this with just a couple patches and then we will get into this with just a little more detail. All right, so hit this with about two or three patches and uh, we'll come right back. Okay, also if you have, again, this lever, you can go ahead and take this lever off. If you need to, it's just going to pop right off. We'll put it back on there as soon as we get done with it. Just go ahead and give it a little wipe off. Again, patch with some oil. No problems there. Okay, we're gonna go and wipe off the area where that lever is, wipe it out. Okay, it looks pretty nice. Again, you can scrub this as much as, you know, as much as you want or depending on how much time you have to do it. Okay, we're just gonna go and put that lever back on. It's gonna fit on there just like that. And again, it might fall off if you tip it over and that's okay, you can just put it back on. All right, now we're going to put a couple drops of oil on some Q-tips and just wipe out this area in between here where these springs are, get that nice and clean. Again, be sure to not pull the trigger. We don't want that to happen. Yeah, that little lever's gonna come off again, that's fine. Let's get in there and wipe everything out good. And again, you can hit this with a couple Q-tips if you need to. Just get it uh, as clean as you want it. Again, I like it so that I don't see any visible powder residue or lead on it at all. Get in there and scrub it out. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Set that off to the side. I'm gonna repeat that with one more Q-tip. So the nice thing about this is I'm also getting a little bit of lubrication on some of those springs in there and just getting all the muck out of here and so on. 
Now you can leave it at this point if you want to. If you have a little needle oiler like I have right here, this comes in handy. There's just four little points that we want to put one drop of oil on. There's gonna be a couple spring points down here towards the bottom. So go ahead and put a drop of oil on each of those mounting points. And then these, this, the spring on both sides of here, go and give that one drop of oil. You guys are AR-15 guys, it's almost kind of like the hammer spring. Uh, you're just essentially putting a drop of oil on there to ensure that it stays lubricated and functions properly. There we go. Okay, again, we don't need to overdo it. All right, and again, just leave it all with a nice thin coat of oil to keep it protected, not over lubricated, and you'll be all set to go. Okay, let's set that off to the side and we'll continue disassembly. All right, up next, we'll go ahead and wipe off that uh, trigger assembly group pin, the pin that holds it in place. We'll go ahead and wipe that off with just a patch of some oil on it, set that off to the side of the trigger group. And then also the uh, magazine tube cap, we're gonna go ahead and just wipe that out, get that cleaned out too. Wipe it off around the outside, just set that off to the side, and we will move on. Okay, so we have these little bars right here, basically your, your cartridge stops, we wanna remove those. And so what you wanna do is make sure you've got the handguard, again, towards the, uh, towards the rear of the forearm, towards the rear of the receiver. And then you can just go ahead and pull those out. They're just gonna pop right out. They have a little tab on the back. It's gonna keep them in place when you put them back in. Kind of gives you an idea what everything looks like before we reassemble it. Okay, we're gonna pull out the side on the right-hand side and we'll go ahead and move on to our next step. All right, drop a oil on a patch. Let's go ahead and wipe those off. You can repeat this process a couple times if you want to, depending on how dirty they are. There you go. Again, they're only gonna go, they're only gonna fit back in one way, so do remember which ones are on the right side and which ones are on the left side. Okay, we will go ahead and set those off to the side. Okay, after that, we wanna remove the slide and the bolt, so just go ahead and pull everything towards the rear and pull up, and it may come out in two pieces, and that's okay. So we've got the slide, and we've got the bolt. All right, now mine came out in uh, three pieces, as you can see, so we're gonna go ahead and get everything nice and clean and wiped off. Now, reassemble before we clean it, this is just what it looks like. Again, it comes out in three pieces. So if yours fell out in three pieces, you don't have to panic. It's really easy to put back together. Bottom goes in the center section. Top section goes in, it only fits one way. You really can't mess it up. All right, let's go and get this cleaned off. All right, so I probably should have mentioned this sooner. I apologize, I'll try to put this back in the early part of the video. Uh, make sure you got yourself a nice, like an old brush sitting around that you can use, you know, nylon bristles. Uh, you can put some cleaner on those bristles and we're just gonna go ahead and scrub everything off because this is pretty caked with some carbon and some fouling and lead. So we're gonna just go ahead and give everything a nice wipe off. And then when we're done, we're gonna dry patch it and then hit it with one more patch with some oil and then set it off to the side. Really, really easy to do. Okay, so then give it a nice, nice scrub here. Uh, you can use an old toothbrush if you want to. Use it, excuse, <laughs> use it as an excuse to get yourself a new toothbrush by using the old one as a gun brush. You can do that. Again, soft nylon bristles are what you wanna use. Again, I'm just using some cleanse oil on it, no problems. This channel here, we're definitely gonna wanna hit this with a Q-tip because this has a buildup inside of it. All right, now we're going to wipe everything off with a lightly oiled patch and then hit it with one more clean, lightly oiled patch and we will go on from there. This cleans off super, super easy. Again, this is gonna take a few patches, so be generous with the patches. You know, don't get too crazy with the oil, but uh, you'll know it's gonna come clean. Okay, definitely get that face wiped off where your firing pin is. Okay, it looks nice, looks good. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and get a fresh patch here. So you can see uh, before and after what's coming off of this. It's a little dirty, that's good, it's been used. It's got a little love going on here, a little love. All right, put that out. Okay, single drop of oil on the Q-tip. Just go ahead and wipe this channel out here. Yeah, they have a tendency to break. There you go. Hit it with one more. There you go. So it has just a light, thin coating of lubrication in there, but it's nothing that's gonna cause any issues. Okay, you're okay, go ahead and set that off to the side. All right, this little channel right here, let's go ahead and wipe this out. Almost has like some oil in it, some grease. There we go, looks good. All right, couple drops of oil on a patch, wipe down all the surfaces. The key here is to not leave everything excessively oiled. That's what you will remember. All right, let's go ahead and reassemble. Here we go. All right, looks beautiful. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and set that off to the side and we'll continue to our next all step. All right, so next step, we want to remove the carrier, which is the silver metal piece that you see here in the receiver. So we're going to go ahead and tap that out. Okay, I've got the 
five thirty seconds uh, roll pin punch here. We're going to go ahead and just tap it. Okay, I've decided to cut back to a one eighth inch uh, pin punch. Makes it just a little bit easier. Gives me just a little more room. All right, pin is out. We will go ahead and pull out that uh, carrier. There we go. And we've also got this uh, pin holder also that came out with it too. So we will go ahead and move on. Again, you can scrub everything off with a brush if you want to. I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe it all off with a clean patch and see if that doesn't take off all the fouling. Hit it with a couple patches, hit it with the dry patch, and then again, drop oil on a lubricated patch just for final protection, and you're all set. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and, hold, uh, go ahead and wipe off that uh, pin holder. Okay, we got the pin right here. Now, I'm assuming that when you put this back together, your pin holder is going to go, it's a little hard for you guys to see it, but back in this way. It's going to basically sit in there. Okay, so this is going to go back in here like this, and then your pin's going to go through the top. So I'm assuming that's how it's going to hold in place. So when we reassemble it, we'll show you that whole process when we uh, start to put the uh, shotgun back together. All right, now we can go ahead and remove the forearm. We'll set that off to the side. We're going to go ahead and take out the plug, if you happen to have one in there. And uh, looks like we're all set to go. We're not going to take out the magazine tube. We're not gonna worry about that for right now. We're gonna leave that as is. Okay, so for me for form cleaning, I'm gonna use again a silk patch. These just come in super handy when you got so much area, you gotta wipe off for the first time. So we're gonna do that. We're just gonna give it all a nice wipe. Uh, if you want to, you can just use a few patches on some oil. I'm sorry, a few patches with some oil on them and you're all set to go. Wipe out the front there. Give it all a nice scrub, nice wipe down. I'll hit this with a dry patch and then a single drop of oil on a patch just as a protective. Now to get in here, you got a couple things you can do. You can reassemble your one of your cleaning rods if you want to. I've got a single piece cleaning rod that came with one of my handguns. Either way, you just wanna take your uh, cleaning rod with a uh, your jag on the end and you can just pull you know a patch or two with some oil on it uh, through here if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and just use this and just scrub it out from both sides. This doesn't really matter, this isn't a barrel, so it's not a big deal. There we go, I'm gonna go from the back here. And then I'm actually gonna take one of my uh, barrel patches and just run that down here one time, but you can see how much crud's coming off here. I mean, this is pretty dirty, so I'm just gonna keep scrubbing it a little bit. But uh, just looking down there, it's nice and clean, nice and shiny and it definitely needed a little bit of care. So again, you wanna make sure you've got a light coat of lubricant on all the surfaces, especially if you're somebody who's using this as a goose gun, you know, you're shooting in a high moisture environment. All right, so inside the receiver, here's what you can do. Again, a couple patches, few drops of oil on it, wipe out the inside of here, hit it with a dry patch, and then hit it one more time with a couple drops of oil on a patch, make sure everything's got a nice protective coating. I'm gonna use my last saturated large patch that I have in the can, and then I'm all out, so. We're gonna go ahead and wipe it out. It's probably gonna be pretty dirty just looking at how good, how dirty that uh, forearm was. But uh, again, you've got a lot of surfaces that have a lot of parts that rub against them and move against them. So it's good to have a decent amount of lubrication in here. Not too much, because you don't wanna foul it up if it gets dirty. But make sure that everything's got that light protective coat. I can't emphasize that enough. I've had a couple times where I've gone hunting uh, pheasant actually out in the snow, got some snow on the gun. You know, I thought I had it wiped off the right way, woke up the next morning and already had a little bit of surface rust that had developed on the gun. It's crazy how quickly these things can rust. But this one's got a nice bluing on it, really good generous bluing, nice durable coating. All right, so you can see what all came out of that. It's pretty dirty, but it uh, looks nice and clean now. It's nice and shiny. Uh, just go ahead and wipe off the magazine tube. All right, so go ahead and wipe off that magazine tube, get that nice and clean. Decided to hit this with another patch because it was pretty dirty. Yeah, still got some stuff coming off on it. Uh, the front area here where your barrel goes in, make sure you've got that wiped out nice and clean too. Again, leave a thin coat of lubrication in there. You can see there's still some buildup. You're gonna wanna hit this with a couple patches till it comes out clean. Especially if you put a lot of rounds through the shotgun or say you picked one up used and you don't know how many rounds have gone through it, uh, you wanna give it a nice you know, inspection and, and cleaning before you take it back out in the field. Make sure it's gonna run good for you. All right, so let's talk about what's gonna happen here because this first step is gonna be a little bit tricky. Uh, we've got your carrier, okay? And we've also got your carrier pin. Uh, this is like a sleeve that goes around it. So this is going to go in here, okay? And it's gonna line up like such. Now, you're gonna need to put this piece in here but then also push the pin through from the left side while the gun is sitting upside down. So you're gonna be holding it while this top pin right here, this well, this small pin is the one that's going to go into the hole, which is gonna go into the carrier through the sleeve and out the other side. So you can do this however you can make it work for you. You may have to put the gun on its side and possibly do this from the side with a flashlight. 
So something I'm going to try doing, I'm going to try using the pin and pushing this in, this pin punch from the side and holding everything in one piece while it's in the gun. And then I'll be driving the pin through the other side, which will push the pin out on the other side. Kind of like what I've done before with an AR-15 with the hammer pins. So we're going to go ahead and push that in this small hole right here and try to hold everything in place. All right, so let me show you what I'm gonna do here to get this to work. So I've got my little pin punch right here. It's holding the uh, carrier in place, okay? Then I'm going to take a pair of tweezers with this little sleeve on it. I'm gonna take the, you know, put that, put that pin on the tweezers and then I'm going to just push it in and then I'm gonna push the um, pin all the way through, the pin punch all the way through and that's gonna hold it in place because this is really complicated and just a little bit frustrating. So put the sleeve on the tweezers, make sure you've got this locked into place Okay, with the tweezers, just put the little sleeve underneath and then push your pin punch through and you're gonna be in good shape. Okay, so when it's all done, again, pin punch goes right there. Okay, and I've got that sleeve in place right there and the pin punch comes out on the other side. Now I'm going to put the pin in and it'll slowly make connections with everything as I push the pin through. All right, so that worked uh, really well and we're just gonna go ahead and finish it out. Again, got the roll pin punch and just tap. Okay, until your pin is seated, check the other side, and we are good to go. All right, let's go on to the next step. All right, so next step is to slide the forend on. We're gonna go ahead and do that. And we wanna push that all the way to the rear. There we go, okay, and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, so you can see how we have the uh, forearm in place. We've got the little bar with some notches right here. Those little notches right there, there's gonna be one on each side. Those are gonna go into the cutouts on your bolt right here. So when you set your bolt into the receiver, you're gonna want those little notches to go in those little slots right there. I know it's a little hard to see right now. I got the lights turned on so I can see what I'm doing because it's dark. So when you set it in there, those are gonna lock into place. So go ahead and put the bolt into place. And when you've got that forearm locked into place, you can move the forearm forward and backwards and your bolt's gonna move in unison with it. So go ahead and put your bolt in there, drop it in, make sure everything locks into place. Right, it's a little tricky to explain to some odd angles, but when it's reassembled, this is essentially what it's gonna do when it's just about there. So you've got the bolt into place, you can see how where everything sits. And as you start to move the forearm, you can see how it does the ejection. Okay, that's how you know that you have it properly uh, placed back into the receiver. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna put these cartridge stops back into place. You're gonna have one that's gonna go on both sides and there's a little area down here that they're going to snap into and there's a channel that they're gonna rest against. It's really hard for me to show that off with the, uh, the lighting and the angle and so on that I'm working at, but they're gonna snap into place and go back against the sides and I will show you what those look like when they're all done. Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna put one in the, on the left side and lock the one in the right side and you'll be all set. And then you wanna pull the handguard forward okay, all the way. So when they're inserted properly, you see the left-hand side right here. Okay, it's gonna lock into place. Okay, and then we got the right-hand side. Okay, you can see how it rests up in there towards the front of the receiver. All right, let's move on to our next step. All right, so here's how it's gonna look. When you've got them inserted properly, they're gonna lock into place on both sides. So one thing that I did was once I, once I got the bolt into place, I pushed it forward about halfway. I was able to pull the handguard forward or the fore and forward. Then I locked the uh, cartridge stops into place. And then what you're gonna do is put your fingers in here uh, so that you can hold those bars in place. And then you're gonna wanna push the uh, fore end as far forward as it goes until it locks. And that's gonna lock those bars into place. All right, so we've got our trigger pack and we're gonna put that into place. You wanna make sure that you've got your hammer pins facing this angle that they look exactly like they do right here, okay? Now you've got a notch that's cut in the receiver right here. You can't miss it when you're looking at it. It's kind of hard for me to, uh, to light that up for you, but it's right there, okay? Now when you took, put the trigger pack in, you're gonna wanna make sure that you keep these little bars pressed off to the side as you insert at about a 30 degree angle the trigger pack and then slowly push it down into place. All right, I'll make a note. You've got uh, pins on both sides just like this. These are gonna go into those notches on those little bars that we put back into place, the cartridge stops. So you wanna make sure that those align and go into those bars as you push the trigger group back in. If they don't align, obviously the trigger pack is not gonna go back into the receiver, just so you know. So again, I fit those little half moon hammer pins into the slots in the receivers like such, so you can see it exactly as it is. Here, let's back up a little bit. Here we go. And then after that, we just want to push down and the trigger pack will go into those, into those little grooves and lock into place and then you're all set. Okay, so I had to do just a little bit of wiggling while pushing forward and it did, it did eventually, they did lock into place in those bars and those stops. Okay, now we're going to put our pin back in and uh, we'll get the barrel back on and go from there. We're going to just tap back in our trigger assembly retaining pin. Okay, I'm gonna use my pin punch to finish it up here. 
Okay, make sure it's seated. Just check it on the other side. Make sure it's not poking out the other side. All right, that's flush. Okay, we'll go ahead and reassemble with the barrel. Right, so putting the barrel back on, very, very simple. Make sure you've got the fore end all the way to the rear and we'll go ahead and slide it on. Might have to wiggle just a little bit as we press as it goes back on. Pull the fore end out just a little bit here. There we go. Pull it down about, about a quarter of the ways and it is reseated. We're gonna go ahead and put our cap back on the magazine tube here. And do that. Obviously we want to make sure that the firearm is clear of ammunition and just go ahead and pump it, test it, make sure that your safety works, pull the trigger, dry fire at one time, wipe it off with a uh, patch with some oil and you are all set to go. And that's it. It's clean. It's done. It's ready to go. It looks nice. Uh, it wasn't too difficult. You know, bolts can always be a little bit finicky to reassemble when you got bars, you got to balance and this and that and everything's got to go together just right. But it is really is a beautiful, very sturdy shotgun. Uh, this one was made in Japan, this particular Browning model. I love it. It's awesome. I'd love to have one of these. So shout out to my dad's buddy, Jerry. Jerry, thank you so much for loaning this to me. I can't wait to test it. It's going to be very cool. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to shooting it. Hey guys, thanks for watching the channel. Uh, please like and subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I've also got a little podcast I do called Caliber Corner, Thursday nights at 6 p.m. Also, we do that podcast Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Uh, going to be taking a little bit of a break here at the end of May if you're watching this video. Um, otherwise, we'll be back in June for Season 5 of Caliber Corner, which is the podcast. Uh, otherwise, I think we're all set. Also, in the video, you notice I did go without my gloves. I basically had to in order to get that sleeve back in when I was trying to do that work. But, uh, you know, typically I, I do recommend you keep your gloves on the whole time that you're cleaning to keep the lead off your fingers and so on and the oil and all that crud. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.